Hey guys, this is James from Isotropic, and in this video we're going to be talking about a new design trend for 2021 called Glass Morphism. You may remember the super hot but super quick trend of new morphism in around April 2020, and we're going to kind of explore this new new trend when it comes to UI and UX design and see if it has any weight, see how to actually do it with HTML and CSS, and kind of discuss where it came from. Uh, this is a pretty interesting design ideology, and it looks a lot different than most web interfaces that you can find today. So it's going to be interesting to explore. Let's talk about um, where this is coming from, what it looks like, and how to make it. So with any design trend, it usually gets started with an existing design that is already being used by consumers or it gets spun off from another trend, which is what new morphism had. With glass morphism, we're seeing this show up on production software such as Mac OS X, um, some Windows software, and it's now pushing itself into the web design community on the two big platforms, Behance and Dribbble. And if you're not familiar with these platforms, I'm gonna walk through some of the designs on them. But essentially, product designers push their visions onto these platforms, and if they become big enough, if all of these visions become big enough, um, they may be adopted into the production web design of the future. So that's what a lot of people were saying was going to happen with new morphism. It obviously didn't. I'm actually pretty glad it didn't because I didn't like that trend that much. Um, but we're seeing a lot of glass morphism now or glass design or frosted glass design in early 2021. So we're going to see if that's going to become a trend or a fad or something that's going to be adopted into um, more popular web design in years to come. So the glass morphism trend got its start in primarily iOS design in starting in iOS 7 and then moving out into the Apple ecosystem which now is primarily visible on the OS Big Sur. Um, we also see this on Windows designs and the primary design characteristic behind this is the frosted glass look that is somewhat transparent, allows the viewer to see a little bit of what the background is, but blurs it so much that it looks like exactly what the trend's name is. There's a glass pane uh, that has frosting or has um, not 100% transparency, a glass pane in front of the background. and. I mean, you're actually pretty familiar with this look if you're on Apple, if you're on Windows. Um, now we're just seeing it come to the greater web design community. If we scroll through uh, Behance and if we scroll through Dribbble, we'll see exactly what we saw with the new morphism, uh, just lines and lines and rows and rows of different designs using this trend. I think it's up to you to figure out if it looks good. I think it looks good. I don't know how the usability is going to work, how the accessibility is going to work, but I think it looks good. Um, is it going to be adopted by the greater web design community? That's for time to tell, but I think with most web design trends, we may see minor incorporations of this trend into uh, new websites, new corporate websites, new websites published by the big agencies out there. But I don't really think that we're going to be getting draggable uh, glass panels or anything like that. It's simply because that's not how websites work. Um, and glass morphism isn't even as apparent as these designs make it out to be on the existing applications of it, primarily Big Sur. If you have OS X, if you have Big Sur installed, and you're looking at this uh, frosted pane kind of appearance, you'll notice that it's not incredibly apparent. It blends into the design, and I think that's how any good design should work. Okay, with all of that said, let's hop into a build using CodePen and just standard CSS and HTML, and I'm going to show you how to create the glass morphic effect for your own website. Okay, so now that I have introduced glass morphic design to you, let's talk about how to actually build a glass morphic card using CSS. 
um, all you need to do is use CSS. And there are a couple caveats that I'm going to discuss at the end of this build or the end of this build walkthrough, I should say. And they're pretty major, so you might want to stick around for that. So here you see your glass morphic card, and this is what this is. And it follows the same principles that pretty much every glass morphic design on Dribbble, uh, as well as the Mac OS X and the Windows glass aspects follow. And that is you get background separation with a combination of three specific elements and your background is always colorful um, with contrasting colors there and first let's talk about the background i think that most backgrounds need to be kind of contrasty and have a bunch of different colors and a bunch of lines and a, bu a bunch of abrupt color changes there because you want there to be uh this type of blur here where there are multiple colors you have a you have a, a purple blending into a darker purple blending into a yellow. Uh, you got pink. You have all of these different colors and you want your blur effect to accurately show these different colors while allowing the content within the card to still be more visible, easier to read, uh, popping out and just just a better experience. And that's what all UX trends are created for, to make it easier and more vis visually, aesthetically appealing to your visitors. So that's what this is. Um, so you have your colorful background and then you have your three major elements to separate this card from your, from your main scene. And that is your background, your border, and your shadow. So first up, we have our background and our backdrop filter uh, all working together to get the effect that we desire. And if I got rid of this, this is what the card would look like. Um, there's no there's no separation from the background, uh, and it's just it doesn't look like a slice of glass. These two work in tandem to get this effect going. First, the backdrop filter blurs the background. Uh, and then the background itself just adds a little more white to that background, making it easier for you to throw text on top that's more readable. But the main feature here is the backdrop filter. And let me cut right now to the caveat, or one of the caveats, that you need to understand when using this effect. An issue here is the fact that the backdrop filter does not work with Firefox out of the box and instead you need to enable a flag to get it to work. And if you're a developer that's more than fine uh, and you can figure that out. But if you're an end user, it's just going to look broken to you unless you have enabled that flag for something else. Um, I think that this is a major detriment here because Firefox is a pretty used browser uh, and being unable to support that with your design is just uh, not the not the greatest thing in the world okay so you have your backdrop filter and you have your background now you need a border and this border I think is actually a little too much so I'm going to mute it a little bit this border kind of gives that rounded effect of the glass pane coming out of your content uh, and this is just done by using a solid 1.5 pixel border, uh, which I think actually just rounds up to two, I'm not sure, uh, with a somewhat transparent white um, color. Then we just have our basic border radius, and that matches typically your theme settings uh, of the website. And then you have your box shadow, and this is a standard box shadow, uh, five offset for both, five pixel offset for both vertical and horizontal, 30 pixel blur and then a uh, simple 15 percenter for your color. Then we just set our width and height as need be, but that's basically how you create this effect using CSS. Um, nothing fancy here, but again, as I cut to the caveat in the middle, because I, I couldn't help myself, um, you need to consider the fact that this will not work on Firefox. And let me see if I can quickly uh, create this pen and show you it on Firefox. It looks a lot different on Firefox than on Let's hop into Firefox. It looks a lot different on Firefox than on Chrome because Firefox doesn't natively support the backdrop filter 
which is the the necessary filter that we need to get the effect to work. So here's this in Firefox. It looks a lot different than in Chrome. Here you can see that there's still an effect here and you can still maybe make it work, but without that background the the background blur effect, it just it, it's a lot it's a much different effect. There's no frosting, there's no glass. Um, and you'll notice that in all of the uh, Behance and uh, Dribble designs, all of these have blur, and blur is a main effect that you need to get this to work. So, to wrap everything up, this design trend, glass morphism, uh, is new, relatively new, but it's also been around, as opposed to other trends. Uh, this is used in production software such as uh, Windows Vista. It goes all the way back to iOS 7, Windows Vista. Um, now it's very predominant in uh, Mac OS X Big Sur or OS Big Sur. And uh, this might actually remind you very much so of the OS Big Sur because it follows the same uh, design concepts here. It follows the same uh, blur. It follows the same um, transparencies. So it's used, uh, the question to be seen is, is it going to be used in uh, more web design applications? And in my opinion, I don't think it's going to take the world by storm as Twitter is saying, and as it looks like it's taking Behance and Dribble by storm, simply because I think you need movement for these cards to make a lot of sense and to work in a design. Um, and you'll see that on uh, specifically the Mac software, you can delete these windows, you can drag these windows over different areas of the background, you can do different things with the actual glass windows, which don't make sense in traditional web design. So I don't think we're going to see a complete glass morphic website adoption anytime in the near future. I could be 100% wrong, but that's just my opinion. So if you want to make it really quick recap, you need three main things, a blurred background, a uh, transparent border, nice border radius, as well as a box shadow. And this gives you separation from your background. It gives you the appearance of a glass element uh, and it allows you to put text and images and other things into your glass morphic content uh, and, and making it work for the design. Hopefully this was a nice little intro on glass morphism. If it blows up, I was wrong. If it doesn't blow up, I was right. Uh, until the next video, I will not see you, and I will see you in the next video. This is James from Isotropy.